thank you very much. I think I'll just kick off as people are mingling in and out of the, the room. Uh, and I just want to say it's a great pleasure to be here speaking in Los Angeles at this inaugural Space Economy Summit, sponsored by The Economist, which of course is a publication that was established nearly 200 years ago by an enterprising Scotsman, just so you are aware of that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm here as Scotland's Business and Innovation Minister uh, with responsibility for the development of a range of high-growth research-intensive sectors in Scotland, which of course includes space and aerospace. Uh, and as I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, Scotland is famous for our stunning landscapes, our rich history and our vibrant culture. But we are also known for our talented people, our ingenuity and innovation and invention. And I'm sure you've all read that New York Times bestseller from a few years ago, The Scottish Enlightenment and How the Scots Invented the Modern World, uh, which gives you a flavour of what's been uh, Scotland's contribution over the centuries. And in terms of that innovation and invention, Scotland's space ecosystem embodies all of this. And my invitation to address you today, I think, reflects um, that growing reputation as well. At its heart, space represents the best in international cooperation and collaboration to tackle challenges for all of humankind. And a key aim of my visits to this prestigious event is to listen and learn and to make connections and forge these new relationships as well. And space is one of the key industries that the Scottish Government has pinpointed as an economic priority. And it's a really exciting time at the moment for the sector in Scotland as it is elsewhere here in the US and the world as well. And recent developments mean that we are quite uh, genuinely on the cusp of something new and exhilarating in Scotland. But I do want to return to the summit's tagline, which is space is everyone's business. Space-enabled communications technology is an essential, if largely unseen, aspect of all our lives in the modern age, facilitating everyday services that help us to navigate, stay connected, execute financial transactions, forecast the weather, and crucially, track climate change in particular as well. And space opens a window that allows humankind to observe our world with ever greater clarity. And those astronauts who first looked back at our planets described a feeling of overwhelming awe, struck by the planets and the Earth's immense beauty, but also they gained a new appreciation of the fragility of our planet at the same time. And today, we should all understand the value of those precious thin layers of gases that surround our Earth and the potential for human activity to alter the delicate balance of nature's chemistry. As we've all read, the Earth is 1.2 degrees warmer than its pre-industrial times, and according to the UN, this July was the hottest ever recorded in human history. And global warming, as we can all see, is already evident in wildfires, flooding, and extreme temperatures, and the consequences of reaching 1.5 or 2 degrees would be catastrophically worse. So meeting this, the greatest challenge of our, li our lifetimes, it requires all our collective powers of ingenuity to forge a sustainable future for future generations. And as we look forward to COP28 in the UAE in the next few weeks, uh, the Scottish Government is more determined than ever to play a leading part in tackling those challenges. Indeed, Scotland has some of the most ambitious targets for cutting emissions anywhere in the world. And already since 1990, we've halved our Greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions. So we do have big ambitions for our commercial space sector and in 2021 we launched our first ever space strategy in partnership with industry and academia. And the strategy sets out our ambition of targeting five billion dollars worth in terms of our share of the global market and creating 20,000 jobs in the sector over the coming decade. And Scotland's story in space is one rooted in academic research and development and of course the miniaturisation and standardisation of spacecraft over the past 10 years, which has transformed our fortunes and allowed us to flourish in terms of our growing space sector. Glasgow at the moment, our biggest city, hosts a thriving satellite manufacturing and mission delivery hub. Uh, multiple companies employing hundreds of highly skilled satellite engineers are now building more satellites, small satellites, uh, in our biggest city than any other place in Europe and indeed is the second biggest location outside of the US for the manufacture of small satellites. 
And Edinburgh, our capital city, has earned the title of being the data-driven capital of Europe, hosting the largest centre for informatics with more than 170 data science companies at the moment. And downstream data companies like Trade and Space, DCAT, Ecometrica and Space Intelligence provide very innovative solutions to businesses and governments worldwide that are supporting more ethical and accessible and sustainable practices. So Scotland is serious in our commitment to sustainable space, which is a key part of our space strategy. Because space must be a force for good via climate monitoring, and we must mitigate the environmental impact of manufacturing processes of launch and end of life as well. And last year, together with industry, we launched the world's first sustainable space roadmap, which encourages responsible growth and puts us on a path to becoming the greenest space sector in the world. Uh, I think the world has taken notice of this new roadmap uh, and they want to learn more from us about how we embed sustainability in this industry. We do have really good upstream and downstream capabilities, but for me what sets Scotland apart is possessing that full end-to-end -end value chain, which is the one-stop shop for small satellites. And launch is the final gap in that chain and that gap will soon be closed. We are ideally located for launches into sun synchronous and polar orbits and several launch infrastructure projects, all of which are progressing well. Indeed, five of the UK's launch sites in development are in Scotland. Five of the seven are in Scotland. We've got Saxovord Spaceport in Shetland, which has already completed construction of their first vertical launch pad and has customers from Europe, the US, and Scotland's very own Skyrora as well. We've also got Sutherland Spaceport uh, in the northwest of Scotland, which is under construction and will host launches of Orbex's prime vehicle, which thanks to its choice of design and materials, it's going to be 30% lighter than similar sized rockets and around 50 times more fuel efficient. And the launch offering doesn't end there. We have a sub development in the Western Isles of Scotland and plans for a horizontal launch facility in central Scotland as well. So we think our offering um, to the global space market is pretty compelling. But the ability to show leadership in global challenges such as climate rests on a strong track record as an outward-looking science-focused nation. Scotland helped the world into the first industrial revolution and as both a, an industrial and an intellectual centre and those core strengths in science and innovation continue through our universities today which are among some of the best in the world. We have 19 universities uh, with three ranking amongst the top 100 global universities according to the QS World University Rankings. And to put that into perspective, Two of Europe's leading economic powers, France and Germany, each have four universities in the top 100, and Singapore has two. So we're doing quite well in those rankings as well. There are a great many examples of how all that intellectual firepower has been directed to society's benefits, uh, and I, I want to just mention a couple in relation to space. Firstly, the UK's Astronomy Technology Centre is based in our capital city, Edinburgh, and it played a leading role in the development of the James Webb Space Telescope and its director, Professor Gillian Wright, led the build of the mid-infrared instruments, which will help to provide new insight into distant objects and the origins of the universe. So not a lot of people know that, that one of the top four instruments on the James Webb Telescope, looking back in time by 13.8 billion years, the most powerful ever, was led by a team in Edinburgh, in Scotland. I think we have to shout a lot louder about some of these things that are happening in Scotland at the moment. Another example of Scotland's expertise is in the LIGO project, which is a, a team at the University of Glasgow uh, who developed that and built key components for LIGO, which is the first in the world to detect gravitational waves, confirming one of Einstein's theories and giving us a new insight into space-time supernovas and black holes as well. Something else we don't shout about a lot that we should start shouting about a lot more loudly. So whilst the United Kingdom as a whole performs well in terms of university research, we do better still in Scotland, we punch above our weight. We produce 12% of the UK's research with only 8% of the population, and it's the quality of the research base that we do have that really sets Scotland apart. And more of Scotland's research publications are up there in the world's 
top 1% of the most cited publications than anywhere else in the UK or indeed the whole of Europe. And the recent announcements that Edinburgh will host a new national exascale computer facility, one of the most powerful in the whole of the world, as well as other announcements such as we've seen in Glasgow, which has been selected as the new European hub of the X Prize. Uh, and of course the X Prize is located and headquartered not far from where we are today, will ensure that Scotland continues to attract the best talent to come and work in Scotland in those sectors. And that's just two announcements in the last two weeks in terms of what's been happening in Scotland, the X Prize uh, and the XSL supercomputer. We very much appreciate, of course, the value that US institutions and students attach to Scotland's education system, and Harvard is the single biggest collaborative partner with Scottish universities, with over 6,000 US students also studying in Scotland. And I'm pleased to say that the benefits of international collaboration extend far beyond the academic sphere. The US is Scotland's most important international trading partner, as both our largest inward investor and our largest international export destination as well. And for the eighth year in a row, Scotland is the top, is in the top, uh, is the top UK foreign direct investment destination outside of London for the eighth year of a row. And inward investment projects grew by 3.3% in 2022 compared to 1.4% across Europe and 6.4% across the UK. So in terms of inward investment at the moment, we're outperforming the UK and Europe. And a large part of that success is down to the sector that we're discussing at this summit and our business that we do with the US. And US companies such as Mangata Networks and Spire Global, before them, chose Scotland to base their satellite manufacturing and operations. So I think uh, it's evidence that our approach in Scotland to, towards inward investment in this sector is working quite well at the moment. But companies tell us they like what we're doing in terms of business, they like our values, they like the quality of life which they enjoy in Scotland, uh, not just their whisky, I'm sure, but other things as well. Uh, and they also see the advantages of a well-connected ecosystem and the ability to bring government, industry and academia together easily. We've had positive comments about that. We've had Spire Global CEO Peter Platzer saying that where Scotland won out was the access to risk capital, the flexibility and importantly the eagerness to support innovative companies. Uh, this really stood out here in terms of his endorsement of Scotland. And the European Space Agency's Director General has said that at the forefront, Scotland's at the forefront of space exploration and innovation. But we're always looking to encourage the best talent to become part of Scotland's thriving space ecosystem where industry, academia and government work closely together to enable the growth and success of industrial space businesses. So that's just hopefully an introduction to what's happening in Scotland and a roundup of some of the exciting developments that are taking place in Scotland. I think what's really important for me as Minister to convey to this summit, to the US and the rest of the world, as just as Scottish historians wrote about how 100, 150 years ago in the American prairies, when the grain was harvested, they were collected in sacks made of jute made in Dundee, put onto locomotive trains, which were manufactured in Glasgow, and then taken to the eastern ports for export and carried in ships that were built in the Clyde in Scotland as well. But not only did we contribute towards that past, we're doing now so in the present and shaping the future as well with our innovation. So the satellites that are being built in Glasgow are being launched from Scotland, hopefully shortly, and the data collected on those satellites has been taken forward by the data analytical companies we have in Scotland as well. And that's a 21st century version of what was happening 100, 150 years ago. So that's all been built around our R&D and our universities following the Scottish Enlightenment onwards. And I, I just want to say that we as a country look forward to very much working in collaboration with all the organisations and businesses attending this summit and in the wider area of the space economy, which really is taking off at the moment, and particularly in Scotland. And we look forward to working with all of you in the years ahead and looking back in five or ten years' time to what was the situation today and then being in a much better place to play our role not only to enjoy the economic benefits in Scotland, but to contribute towards the saving of humankind as well and saving our planet and playing that crucial role as well. So thank you very much for having Scotland here at the summit today. Thank you.